Thank you. Leslie, you're on mute. Leslie, unmute yourself. Hi, okay. sorry. Having okay. some mouse problems. Can you all hear me? Yes. Now, I guess in the past week, as we uh, found out about Elsa's passing, you know, I, I spoke to many people um, and it quickly became clear to me that the depth and breadth of Elsa's connections with a lot of people within our club, so many people. Uh, some of the connections like mine are more recent and they span only a few years. Others go back for decades. Now, I got to know Elsa early on when I first joined TMCS. She was my assigned mentor. And Elsa helped me tremendously with my early speeches. She gave me lots of encouragement and advice. And she offered some really great, helpful suggestions, like the importance of always having a strong, clear message, how to create drama in your speeches, how to add personal touches. She was just the right balance of a coach, a critic, a cheerleader, always bright, always positive. And we kept up that relationship over the years. And under her expert tutelage, I've you know, since become more confident with my um, speech writing, but still I would often bug her with a draft or to check in with her afterwards when I've done a speech. Um, and she was always just such a helpful and giving person. Last March, uh, out of the blue, Elsa suggested that we grab lunch. I, I was a bit surprised. I thought she wanted to check in on her mentee. But when I arrived, I was surprised to see Ernest Chen there as well. It turns out that they had uh, arranged the lunch to encourage me to run for the uh, Club Exco. Now, I, I was hesitant because I knew it was a very big job. And I wasn't sure that I was up to the task, but they were both very encouraging and supportive. And eventually I decided to go for it. Now this past year has been a wild chaotic ride, made even more exciting with the uh, pandemic, but it's also been one of the best learning experiences in my life and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. And for this, I have Ernest and I have Elsa yet again to thank for. At the time when I decided to run for club president, I told Elsa, hey Elsa, I'll do it on one condition, that you be a part of the EXCO team. And straight away she agreed. And she, was, uh, she said she'll put a hand up for social director. Elsa has been an instrumental part of the EXCO team in the past year, lending her energy, her wisdom, and her infectious positivity to our EXCO meetings. She's organized a great outing to a vintage camera museum. She's led many Zoom sessions where she helped welcome new members into the club and help them adjust. And she arranged this fantastic year end holiday party together with a few others um, that where everyone had so much fun. As I look back through photos and emails over the past few days, I realized that my last exchange with Elsa was back at the end of March. Uh, message from Elsa, hi, can you send me my evaluation form? Me replying, sure, not today, horribly jammed. And that was it. I had evaluated her speech on March 23rd and looking through my evaluation folder, I found out that I had filled up that evaluation form, but never sent it. I feel terrible about this. She had always been there for me. And the one time that she does something for me, I dropped the ball. Friends, do you have people like that in your life? People who are always there for you, 
but perhaps you haven't always been there for them? This is certainly a wake up call for me. But to be honest, I don't think this would have bothered Elsa much. She was always such a generous person, full of giving, positivity, and joyousness. My dear Elsa, you've left us too soon. I thank you for your kindness, your generosity, for always taking an interest in our growth and development, even though you didn't know us. We will always miss you. My mentor, my sister, my friend. Bye-bye, Elsa. Thank you so much, Leslie. That was beautiful. And yes, I remember her exactly like that. Always there. She, she, I think she, she never said no to me, even though she always had things to do. And I had just joined the Excel. I was like, okay, who's, who's the VPM? Who's the VPE? And, and you know, what role can I like fit in? This is when you had just asked. And the, one of the first times when I actually did meet her properly was on her 60th birthday at Lulu's. I remember Anjali took us there. And yeah, it was just, just beautiful getting to know her as, as, you know, on a social occasion as that. I'm going to call Ernest next to share some memories about Elsa, please. Ernest, if I can ask you to unmute yourself. Thank you. Well, my dear friends, I'm very happy and yet I'm very sad for today's memorial service. I was really happy when Vicky told me, Ernest, Ernest, there'll be a thousand people coming for the memorial service. Make sure that the bandwidth is big, you know. So I managed to get a Zoom to increase the number to a thousand. But today we only got 45. But nevertheless, these are the happy people who want to have a memorial service for Elsa. These are Elsa's closest friends. They want to have a good farewell for Elsa. That's why we are here. I'm also very happy for Elsa because if not for this memorial service, we may quietly and reflect Elsa personally. But now we can share the tribute of a great lady called Elsa Lin. I first met Elsa in 1990 when she walked into the Toastmasters Club of Singapore meeting room at Mandarin Hotel. A cute little girl, a petty girl, with a smiling disposition, very innocent looking, but with great command of language. I said, Elsa, where are you working? Oh, I work at the Singapore Exhibition Services. I work for the PR department. I'm doing all the writing and communication. I said, wow, that's fantastic. Yes, Elsa excelled in language. She loved delivering speeches. She's always the first one to raise her hand for table topics. She took part in many speech contests and won many speech contests. She will be the world champion if she take speech making seriously. Elsa is never a serious person. Whenever there was a contest on, she would prepare the night before. When she appeared at the club meeting, she said, Ernest, Ernest, you know, I only prepared this morning. Now, excuse me, I have to go and do the rehearse. Ah, that was Elsa. You see, a very charming person, very easygoing person, love to have fun. That's why she has become our social director for many occasions. But Elsa is never a leader. She never wants to lead. She just wants to be a great follower. In TMCS, I pushed her to be president. Then reluctantly, she agreed. So in 2007, I make her the president. And then we have a group team. In 2008, I get Jackie Lynn to be president. In 2009, Jeffrey Williams. You see, these three people, though they are not great leaders, they are very passionate about Toastmasters. And that is the reason why they are good members for the Toastmasters. They stay on. 
So being a president is makes a lot of different because we learn a lot. One year president equal to 10 years as a member of Toastmasters. I also love to travel. If you love to travel, you're looking for traveling companions. I organized many overseas trips. Elsa never missed them. She really enjoyed. I remember whenever we're in Bangkok, in fact, we're in Bangkok three times. She always said, hey, I love to go to massage. And that's why it's a good massage parlors. She really dared to go to massage. She loved it. You see, we travel many times together to Beijing, to Chengdu, to Hong Kong, to Macau, to Malacca, to Johor Bahru, to Kuching. You know? The late one in Taipei, I didn't join them because I was busy. You see, in travel, we promote friendship, we promote fellowship, and most important, we talk nonsense, we play the games, we sing. You know, I mean, we enjoy karaoke. These are the things that really, you know, create a good rapport and bonding as a friend. Elsa also loved to study and to attend courses and programs. She liked to increase her marketability because she loved to communicate. So the courses that she took always about counseling, coaching, training, and of course, you know, uh, doing something that concerned about communication. Of course, she went into insurance business and so forth. Elsa also once was my student, but she enjoyed making friends and learning really in my class. That is her forte, you know. She would like to do things and talk and communicate. This is Elsa. See, the biggest talent in Elsa is writing. Yes, she has a flair in writing. She's very good in writing. In fact, two years ago, I engaged her to write a memoir for one of the millionaire whom uh, she did it fabulously, fantastic. And then she even wrote a book. I don't want to call it Where Love Was Gone or something like that. You see, Elsa really thrived in writing, but then she didn't really pursue that seriously. She could be excelled as a good writer, but she didn't. Well, time and time waits for no man. But time can wait for Elsa. You see, Elsa was never on time. Elsa is always late for every appointment. This is one thing I always tell Elsa. Elsa, can you improve on it? So whenever we have a lunch, dinner, she's always not five minutes late, 10 minutes. It's half an hour to one hour late. I mean, she enjoyed it. Like sometimes Wednesday lunch, when we start paying the bills, she walk in with it. Oh, I'm here. You know? Mm. <laughs> Well, that is fun. I mean, I mean, Elsa really, you know, enjoy. When she came in late, she come in the laughter, you know, that make us happy. Well, Elsa, you're always late in everything. But why were you so early to go away? Can't you wait for us? You see, she went away so fast. I could have gone away before her, but she didn't. That is something that puzzled me. I'm older than her, but she went away so fast. See, life is never smooth. Many of us think that you know, life will go on and on, but things will happen, just snap. Well, Elsa had been a jolly good friend, not only to me, to many of the fellow Toastmasters. Elsa was a fun loving lady. Elsa is a gregarious nature and she has a vivacious personality. In Singapore, she knew where to go for good food. She knew where to go for good karaoke. She knew where to go for listening to a blue music. 
she really enjoyed those things. But now, the only thing we can do is to turn back our memories and wash those things in our mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy Elsa lived a good life. I'm happy Elsa may be in a better place. I don't know. But being a Christian, I believe that she'll be belong to sit next to Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is the only thing that is consolation. I believe that She's already there. Goodbye, Elsa, goodbye. Goodbye, Elsa, goodbye. When you are gone, but we are sad, one day we'll meet again. Farewell, Elsa. Thank you to you, Toastmasters of the day. Thank you, Ernest. Yeah, listening to this really, it just reminds me of my first couple of weeks at the club outside when we were serving food. I remember, I think it was you and Elsa going back and forth and she said, no, no, Ernest, I totally disagree. I don't know what it is. And I turned around and asked someone, I said, they've been going on for a while, what's happening? And they're like, oh, that's just them best friends, closest buddies, and it clearly shows from your stories. So thank you so much for sharing. It's a great, great recap. Thank you for that. Um, Hok Chong, would you, can I get you to do, come, un unmute yourself and come on board to share your memories as well? Thank you. Elsa, I call you the funny girl because of your perpetuous, contagious smile humorous nature and hearty laughter. No one had made me laugh as much as you had. We first met in 1989, 31 years ago, at a band Southeast Asia Toastmasters speech contest, which is my first speech contest at the Toastmasters. You, we were among the 12 finalists and also the youngest. I noticed you that young little Chinese girl who spoke a perfect English and always had that big and white smile on her face. That was the first time you caught my attention, that little funny Chinese girl. Many years passed and we met again in 2010 when I joined TMCS after 15 years living in Europe, returned from Germany back to Singapore. In these 10 years, from 2010 to 2020, we got to know each other very well, like brother and sister. We were so close and, and relaxed, which each other that we often joked to be the married couple, <laughs> funny couples, distressed couple, or divorced couple. Whatever funny roles we wanted to role play at different occasions. You were always so sportive to role play with me, to have a good laugh, to have a good time. I recall our funny couple rode during our China holiday at Zhang Jiajie, when we shocked the naive Chinese tour guide, Frank, who was so confused why this funny couple don't share the same hotel room when they are on holiday. We buffered Frank with the story that we were a married couple. In the day, we are married, and in the night, we are divorced. Hence, we sleep in different rooms. We went through this ritual every day during the holidays, and in spite of our holiday, and generated many laughters for our tour mates. From our holiday in Zhang Tia in 2018, we continue this role play to our next holiday in Xi'an in 2019, last October, where my second platonic wife, Vicky Su, appeared in this Chinese drama series, Emperor Hock Chong and his Empress Elsa and concubine Yang Guifei, Vicky Su. 
it was this silliness and foolishness. We role play that make our China holiday so enjoyable and memorable. At the same time, we entertain our tour company, Jackie, Anna, Kitchen Ho, Sarah, Wei Ching, Esther, and Wendy. Everyone had many moments of hearty love and the sweet and fond memories of you, Elsa. Elsa, as we both live to close to each other in Bishan, we share our going home taxi trip together after each Monday TMCS meeting. These weekly Monday night taxi trips over 10 years had allowed us the opportunity to get to know each other intimately well, where we share our hearts and mind, our ups and downs, our excitement and worries, as well as stories of our romantic love lives. Yes, we share our thoughts and feelings of for our partners. Elsa, as we got to know each other well, our friendship got closer and tighter. <laughs> we joke, joke often and toast with the ideas of retiring and growing old together like an old couple, since we are both single. Since we both live only a stone throw away from each other, we talk about our retirement activities like morning jog in Bishan Park, going for breakfast at Amok Yemeni, one, one Geki Hawker Center, evening stroll at Lower Pierce Reservoir, your favorite haunts, and dinner at your favorite poker club at Thompson Road. We also talk about hosting dinner parties. At each other place, when we would invite our khakis from the Young Heart group, Vicky, Allison, Swimming, and Norman, and also the Pyong Pyong group, Vicky, Wei Ching, Sarah, Jackie, Esther, and Wendy. We share party ideas, dinner menus, as well as cake recipes. Elsa, you were always health conscious and talk all the time about calorie free cakes. Elsa, now that you are eating the other world, I wonder what to do with the exciting dinner and party ideas that we talk in the taxi on our Monday night home trips. Will these parties ever materialize now that you're gone? Elsa, I want to promise you here, I shall carry out this dinner and party ideas out for you to bring our khaki and young at heart and pyang pyang groups together at my place. We know that each time our khakis meet, each time you will be there with us. We know you will join us, be with us, love with us, eat and drink with us. At the same time, we all, all talk and think about, about your calorie-free cakes. Elsa, you know you have left in each and every one of us your khakis, meant for memories. Memories of your hearty laughter, your wide smiles, and your funny jokes. Elsa, you were the candlelight at our dinner tables the DJ at our dance parties, and the lead songbird at our karaoke gatherings. Will you always remember, you always be remembered by your khaki as a lady who always had a listening ear, a counselor to offer comforting words and advice, and a friend who stood by us all the time, and at any difficult time. Funny girl, we will all miss you. You are now happier and safer in the, other, in the other world. Your worries are no more. And your mind can finally rest in peace now, Elsa. Elsa, we all love you. Arishta. Thank you so much, Okja. <clears throat> that was really beautiful. 
as always, you really hit the ball out of the park. I think for me, I've been hearing, I'm very, um, as everyone, I don't know how many of you know, I'm very close to Hock Chong, and hearing so many stories of Three Musketeers and the way Vicky, Elsa, and Hock Chong stories go on and on, the fights at, you know, especially at your home and when one of the balcony parties, I was like, oh man, you guys can't stop fighting. But it's just so unique and so different, this, this friendship. And it's hard for me to listen to you talking in past tense, you know, about Elsa. So, but thank you so much. That was beautiful. Arisha, can Vicky? I intercept? Yes. Sorry, yes. Arisha, I yes. have an emergency. I have to exit now. Okay. Um, may Go I ahead. say some words then I leave yes, you please. guys behind? And, yes, please. Okay, is that all right for all thank of you? Thank you, thank you. Yes. I'm sorry, I just, got a, I just got a message that I have to leave now. Um, my name is Anne. I know Elsa 15 years. Sorry. Our common circle in the media and in PR business. When I started the Women Chamber of Commerce, she came to me and said, Anne, can I be involved with you in helping other women? I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I say, Elsa, I don't have to ask. You are the right person who is to be involved with us. So she stayed on board with the IWFCI, carried out many missions, many initiatives and was on board with me for more than 10 years. <laughs> the sudden departure blown my mind away. She's so healthy. She's the one that tell us to eat right. She's the one that gave us all these physical exercises that we never did. <sighs> we share personal family things about her family, her personal life. So we got very personal. And I have her feelings throughout all these years. I share her, I share her love, I share her problems. I was just taken aback that when she, when I got the news that she, she died. So I says, oh my God, how can she die alone in Bishan? I just couldn't bear the heart that she's alone and nobody is to help her. Heart attack can be revived. It's not that you can't revive a, a, a illness like that. Although she had said that she has got hypertension, but that's it. She had never had any heart failure other than hypertension. That's why she's so careful in what she takes. We had a lovely Christmas and New Year dinner together with all my ladies' friends, and we had a good time. Uh, we're gonna miss her. And I want to thank Toastmaster for giving her this platform of friendships. I felt very honored that she asked me to write her forward for her book. And I'm very touched. I never get to see her friends so much other than Vicky occasionally. <laughs> uh, so she's in good hand, but I think life is too short. We must treasure learning what Elsa has gone through. Someone that has got no illness and yet take on this sudden death, which is not fair. To me, it's not fair. But that's a call for God. She has got other purposes in life. So as I said again, I want to thank Ernest, Vicky, for getting me involved and seeing her through. Thank you very much for being part of Toastmaster and being part of Elsie's life. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Anne. And I'm glad we got to listen to you. Thank you. Vicky? Yes, I've known Elsa for more than 10 years. Actually, she's younger than me by a few months. And being a stroke, we, uh, survivor, I never thought that I can outlive Elsa. She's healthier. 
and she eat healthily. And she never complained about her high blood intake. So when I received the news, I was thinking, is it April Fool? You know, even that day when she died on, on Monday, noon time, I did not dare not announce it until Tuesday. It's so unreal. Maybe the doctors also know that when you say somebody passed on, it's so harsh. So even the doctor did not say, the doctor said in ICU and trying to rescue her, but her heart stopped. That's why a group was praying for her to revive her, but actually she was gone by the time I heard the news. It's very sad. Other than being a very fun person to be with, she's outspoken, full of compassion to help others. Besides meeting her at the club on Mondays, we travel together overseas on a field trip. And we meet for meals in a small group from time to time. The next meal with the group would have been sometimes this week, just for just a few of us. Elsa was always bubbly and likes to joke. But we knew behind her cheerful personality, she had her ups and downs, just like us. But she could move on with a smile. What I admire her the most is, she had always been standing for herself. And she had tried so many different areas, although some are not promising or not lucrative. But she soldiered on. Elsa was willing to learn new things and new technology, even until the last moment. She's a good role model for all of us. Among the work she had done, including selling insurance, being a museum guide, and a, life, uh, uh, and, and, and a financial advisor. She had also authored a book called When Money and Love Were Gone. After 15 years, she decided to do a late midlife career change. And that was only four years ago. She had completed her diploma in positive psychology and she reinvented herself to be a life coach. To do all this, she needed, she needed to, 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 to learn a different set of skills altogether. She needed to learn psychotherapy, she need to learn coaching, branding on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, marketing, blogging, etc. But why she want to do this? Because she want to help the others. She want to help the others who have struggled through life like her. For example, anxiety, relationship problems, money and work issues. During her spare time, she even learned to paint and had done a few pieces commission work, which are now valued like Picasso art. Elsa, you did well. She has also learned to bake. In the last few weeks, she conducted two webinars uh, by using a tool called Points of View, whereby the participants will learn to interact with each other and, expect, and explore all aspects of resilience and to, to understand their own response to, to, to stress, etc. It was interesting. I had attended, I got a chance to, to attend uh, one of it during our trip with her to China. Elsa had told us that her mother died when she was little and uh, she was brought up by her grandmother. She did not have an easy childhood. So many of us were in fact luckier than her. And perhaps that's why it helps her to grow to be very strong and resilient. Elsa, you are such a gift to us. We miss you. We hope you are in a better place now. Maybe you'll find eternal peace and joy in your new world. And till we meet again, thank you. Back to you, MC. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you for sharing. Lawrence, are you good to go now? You need to. Un Can you unmute yourself? Okay.
Am I on? All right. Hi. Well, thank you everyone to be here to honor Elsa. She's a great lady. I knew her even before Toastmasters. We were even working together. She was the copywriter. I'm the client. And she remembered me at the time I was very formal, Thai. And now I'm real casual, different, like her, fun, enjoy, enjoy life, fun going. And she has, I always admire her because she is a clear thinker and she speaks well and very clear. So even in her death, there are message for us. Rightly so, for those who know her well, like Ernest, Hock Chong, Vicky, we you know, she's always late. <laughs> we know she's late. And this instant, she's not late. Why? Maybe she's so important to God. God called her back. <laughs> so she cannot delay anymore. Because like we can say, she's healthy. But she's called back. This is a lesson for us. Now, we are sharing moments with her. The good things. The nice things. Actually, what's important. Do we share such good messages to all of us, to one another, why? We all are living. Don't wait. Don't wait. Have you ever spoken in front of her? They are directly telling her how good she is. And she is. She is very good, even how funny she is when she speaks impromptu. This lady has a message. She's been through a lot and she's seen a lot. So that's so wonderful. Don't wait. And God didn't wait for her. She must be so precious. They need an evaluator up in heaven. So that's important. It's for us to hit even why we are alive now. Please affirm each other say some good thing, encourage each other, support each other. That is important. No doubt, I'm sure, even now, she's in another world, she will hear, she will know. But it will be better here, alive, than now she's gone and cannot respond. So it's important. Let's also move on. You must see that is in the heart. Because why would she join Toastmasters? Because she got something to share. She got a message. And she got a gift. That's why she can do it at the last minute. Because she can do it. She knows she can do it. Because that's a gift. And each of us have gifts. Just that sometimes we do not discover. And sometimes it's important that we help each other point to each other. There are good points here. We have so much talents here. So don't we ever waste any talents. So that's one thing. Don't wait. Do it now. Affirm, support each other. And the next thing is a very important lesson. Listen. Thank God we are alive now. I could die the next minute. And I'm alive to talk to all of you now. I don't know if I'm here tomorrow. So what does this mean? Please, please, please. Live well. Enjoy life. Have fun. And play. She has fun. She's smiling. I can still remember her smile. And 
I'm touched. I'm real sad because I know her 30 plus years. So very important. Say to yourself, if any time you remember, thank God, I am alive now. Because we don't know. Like, Vicky says she's older. I'm older than hell, sir. I've been to hell. I'm an amputee. I'm on dialysis three times a week. Every time is four hours. You know one thing? I mean, you all do not. Understand. Every time I go for dialysis, I got two needles poked into my arms. Two needles poked. Mind you, huh? these are painful. Huh? These need needles, one to pour for the blood to out, the other side for in. So, we never know. As long as we are alive, let's live life to the fullest, play full out, play all out, enjoy life. And thank you, Elsa. I know you didn't leave us with nothing. You leave us with message. Don't wait. Help each other. Encourage each other. And the other thing, thank God. I am alive right now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Yeah, listening. To, I think listening to all your friends is such an insight into hers. Always late for everything except gone too early, too soon. That's Elsa. Thank you. Um, I think Jackie needs to leave soon, uh, Alison. I, so, Jackie, would you want to share before you go? I just got your okay, message. Sure. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, Thank you. It really short. Lah. So, uh, you know, you. in fact, uh, I know Elsa for, I think it's about 14 years lah, ago when I first joined uh, Toastmasters Club of Singapore. Uh, so, back then, I was still a very young chap. And even when I met her for the first time, I think she really came across as a really very, you know, bubbly, very cheerful lady. And I just wonder like, sometimes like, how, how can she be so optimistic about, you know, her, her, her life? On? And it's like always the case, you know, and that's her default. Like. So, you know, there's a saying that when life gives, gives you lemons, you can always make lemonade out of it. Now, this may seem and sound like a cliche. It's very hard to apply in life, right? But, you know, if there's one person I know who is capable of really putting this into practice, it's, it's really Elsa. Lah. And so, for example, I'll never forget uh, this experience that we had when we, had, we organized this uh, Toastmasters uh, outing to... We traveled overseas, by the way, a few times. And I can tell you, Elsa is definitely one of the best travel buddies uh, you can ever find. Because throughout the, throughout the whole trip, right, she will rarely, you know, complain. Uh. Sometimes, you know, travel, some people complain a lot. You know, so for her, even like sometimes things are, were bad, you know, but she will hardly complain, you know, maybe just a few words, but, but that's all. So she's always looking at the bright side of things. So about two years ago, I still remember during the trip to Zhang Jiajie, and it was also like what Hock Chong said, lah, you know, and uh, that during that trip, right, I remember that because somehow the, I think the airline made a mistake. So her luggage actually ended up in a different destination. So as such, she had to live through the first three days of the trip without all her toiletries, without her clothes, and uh, I mean, can imagine uh, for a lady, right, without all these toiletries or clothes, uh, it will be tough. Now, in fact, even for me, if, if I were to put myself in her shoes, I thought, wow, that would have definitely dampened my mood uh, tremendously. But guess what, you know, instead of complaining or what, she just, you know, she was still very cheerful, and she just said, oh, you know, uh, I bought this insurance, you know, and now I can really get to uh, buy some new clothes. Uh. So like, well, she was always looking at the positive side of things. Uh. So, I mean, really Elsa, uh, she left us 
really, really very uh, sudden. I just want to conclude now by saying that, you know, uh, what I remember most about Elsa is that her laughter, you know, her love for everything that she does, her passion towards her life, uh, her kindness, and her general belief that everything is going to turn out well. I think people who know her well, you know, will probably agree with me. And what I really miss about Elsa is that she's such a wonderful friend, uh, wonderful travel buddy, and someone who is always there to encourage you, you know, even though she's going through a hard time uh, herself. So while Elsa's death is, was really sudden, right? Um, her life was not faint. So I thank God that uh, she has gone to a better place. And even though she has left us physically, uh, she, I believe that, you know, her memory would always be with us. She'll be there, you know, emotionally, you know, and uh, spiritually. So uh, that's all I have to say, right? Uh, rest in peace, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie, for sharing before you left. Good on you. Yeah, great, great memories coming out of everyone's uh, stories with her experiences with her. She really was a bright spark. And now that I remember, you know, her walking in late, she would just walk in like really fast, a little bit head bent down and she go, oh, you know what, this is what happened. And all. Very, very much true to all of those. Bright and bright always, no, no matter what happened. So always smiling. Thank you for that. Um, Can I speak? You're Can I speak? Crazy. Can I speak? Yeah, sure. Can I speak? Ke yeah, Kichi, huh? Yes. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. I'm sure every one of you uh, this evening, uh, afternoon here, I think somehow or other we will, all of us feel very sad of what's happening. It's a very sudden, you know. Let me tell you. On Monday at 11.33, to be exact, I spoke to her. You know what I talked to her about? Because we have been meeting every Wednesday. This, this meeting is a lunch meeting where friends and Toastmasters usually meet. And this lunch meeting has been on for nearly 30, 30 over years. We started in 1980 until now because of all this COVID we stopped so i call up say since we are now free to have lunch uh five to a person on, in one table so can we have lunch do you want to meet for lunch say okay of course well uh, then i talked to her i because now you have to book the table you cannot just go to a restaurant and get a table for five or two or what, I do not know. But I told her I will arrange. She agreed. Then we talked something else about, because now I'm no more Toastmaster Club in Singapore. I met her in 1990, when she first joined Toastmaster Club in Singapore. I've been in the club for nearly 20, 20 to 30 years. Then now I'm with Toastmaster in Christ, another Toastmaster Club. And she just, beginning of this year, she just left Toastmaster Club Singapore and joined us because I've been talking to her and she decided to join Toastmaster Club in Singapore. So at that moment, when I spoke to her just 11.33, within a short period of time, I heard the news that she was, she collapsed at home and she was admitted to hospital. So I called up a good friend, Freddie, who is uh, staying in a uh, flat. And she says she's, he's very busy, he's gonna talk to me. I say, what happened to Elsa? She say she is dead. She has just passed away. So it was a shock to me. I, I, at that moment, I feel so shocked that I, my thoughts are off. I won't catch, you know. So for the rest of the day, I was thinking about her because she is all alone, staying. Of course, the friend is there. Fortunately, she's blessed that the friend staying with her. 
can contact all her brothers in Hong Kong, and she got a relative, uh, relative in law in Singapore who helped to arrange the wake and the funeral. Because I was concerned the day when I heard this, I said she is alone. How, how can she arrange? Or how can the funeral be arranged and how the wake can be arranged? But I can, from all this, why I was so shocked and uh, sad about the whole thing was I know her since 1990 when she joined the club. And we are meeting every Wednesday, lunch meeting. And I can testify that what Kok Chong, Ernest Chen has spoken about her is, is true. She's a fun-loving girl, humorous, she enjoys life, she live life to the fullest because on all the trips that she went, she might go on more trips than myself. I went to, to, to with uh, Elsa, Kok Chong, Ernest, Vicky, and Jackie two years ago in Chan Chia Chia. And we have a wonderful time. From there we know, you can see that she, she's for all. Even in Singapore, when we want to, sometimes I quite disappointed because the lunch, you cannot get enough people. She already encouraged me to say, do not give up. You still must carry on. This is the Toastmaster tradition. I know in the heart, she is truly a, truly a pure Toastmaster. She loves Toastmaster. She not only loves us, she can speak well, and from what Ernest told you, she can write very well also. She can be everything. She's a woman of many talent. And she not only that, a woman of talent, she has a heart, compassion for other people. I know that what she said, share, she, one thing she said is that her families are not here, all over in some of them, Europe, America, some China and all that. But she always tell us a story about her grandfather and all that. Her grandfather was uh, in Taiwan, is a general, you know. And she is so, she so proud of her family. But somehow, other, as you heard, she was, she came, she lived a very hard life. The mother, I think also got issue in the family, did not take care of her. But I know from what she has gone through, the whole person of Elsa, you can see that to be a cheerful person, optimistic person, a person who learned to help other people, is that from all this the hard life she lived, she wants to bless others. People. I know whatever happened, I know all of us will miss her. And that one thing, I may want to share with you is that during one of the Toastmaster meeting, the table topic, I posed the question because we are TIC Toastmaster in Christ, we are Christian Toastmaster Club. So we discussed topic on the Bible and I asked the question to the whole club. What will you, when you meet our God, our heavenly God in heaven, what do you really want to ask God? What, what question do you want to ask God? She did not answer the question, but she shared with somebody this, this question. She said she wants to ask God, how come she is not married? But I know, I know when she left us, I think God, she will meet God up there. And God will answer her, her question, why? She's not married. I know a lot. I know all this, what she has gone through. Even what sudden death and all that uh, heart attack. I think God spared from pain and suffering she's, she will go through. If she go put through all this, she will be paralyzed. She cannot move around. Somebody must help her. But it's a very painless death. And surely God is very merciful to us and bless her. And surely at this time, I know all of us are very sad. All of us have very happy memories of what uh, Elsa is, uh, 
Wu Kok Chong has shared, Ernest has shared, and others have shared. Surely all of you have your own happy memories. And surely you all miss her because she is really a truly a real human being. A human being perfect in everything. Except she got one question. Why she hasn't find the right one? But I know that our God in heaven, heaven Father, love him very much. And now in heaven with God. And we, up there, I know, Lord, God will spare from all the pain and suffering we've been going through, all the anxiety, fear. And she, when you meet God, you have the perfect peace with God. And the love of God will embrace her never before. So my, these are my few words that I can uh, say. I wish Elsa till we meet again. I know you will be very happy up there. And you, as you watch us sharing this, I'm seeing, I think you will feel so, so blessed that you have so many friends to share thoughts about you. Wish you the best. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kichina. I just want to say um, thank you for all the sharing from everyone. This, uh, you know, a, a tribute from TMCS, we, we still have just a few friends who want to share. If uh, there's two or three more, and then anyone else who wants to, you know, share can just DM or just just unmute yourself and do so. so we have Alison, Norman, and uh, Peter going next. Um, Alison, are you on? Uh, yes. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Arishtar, and thank you so much for giving me this chance to speak in memory of Elsa. So I knew Elsa for close to 14 years, since January 2007, and that was when I um, joined Toastmasters. So Elsa was one of my longest friends, and I remember that moment when I first stepped into TMCS uh, at Sheraton. So the setting was really professional. Everyone was so well-dressed and well-spoken. Uh, to be honest, I was a little overwhelmed. And just when I was just lost, you know, a, a smiling face appeared and it was none other than Elsa. So she, she had such a, a calming voice and a very cheerful tone and that broke the ice a little and I, I just felt so welcome. Um, I, I love the vibes of TMCS. Uh, before I knew it, in a matter of months, I was asked by Ernest to join the EXCO. And then a few months later, I went to Hong Kong and Shenzhen with Elsa, Ernest, Jackie, and a few others from other clubs for the uh, Toastmasters convention. And I even shared a room with Elsa. So uh, she was a good roommate. She had no bad habits, no snoring. And to what Jackie said, she, she had no complaints. You know, she was always game for everything. The only complaint I have about Elsa uh, the point that a lot of you have already made was that she loved to take her own time. So when you go travel with her, you always got to wait for her. Yeah. I, I have so many fun outings, controversial and ridiculous conversations with Elsa, wonderful memories. I, I cannot even begin to list them. Um, but for that Hong Kong trip, uh, one of my most memorable moments was a boat ride with her and Jackie down a water slide in Ocean Park. Uh, Jackie, I'm not sure if you remember, but it was, uh, it, I, I actually bought the photo. You know, I still have that photo in my other um, apartment and we were like screaming our lungs out. And that was, uh, that was just a very beautiful picture that captured all the expressions. Um, the whole trip was so fun. Uh, so Elsa is, uh, she was personable. She got along well with people of all ages. And to me, she was just delightful and always optimistic. Uh, Elsa and I, we, we have a big age gap, but I never saw her as someone generations away. She's someone that I would just go to for like, you know, healthy recipes, for relationship advice, for hanging out and talking all kinds of crabs, you know, and many, many things. She, she's like a fun and that I, I didn't have. And I've never felt that her age slowed her down in any way. 
In fact, she's very active for 62. She was starting her own coaching business. She was writing a book and she was planning on trips. That sense of curiosity and adventure in Elsa never ceases. And there are so many things I was looking forward with Elsa and the Young at Hearts gang this year and beyond, uh, like hanging out at Polo Club, uh, wine and cheese at Marina Bay Sands Hotel Room. She was going to plan another one. Um, uh, we were also thinking of going Epo for a short trip uh, just with a few friends. So her death really came as a shock and everything just feels so surreal, even up to now. Sometimes when I type my messages, I'll accidentally say, you know, mention Elsa because you, you just, the fact that she had, she had passed away just didn't really sink in. Uh, there's a saying in Chinese, 人算不如天算. So the, the equivalent in English is actually man proposes, God disposes. And sometimes it's only through the death of a close one and in such an unexpected manner to make us realize more probably that we should not take life for granted. We should not take family and loved ones for granted and the things that we hope to do for granted. Um, so Elsa, I just want to thank you for imparting this lesson one last time. Thank you for being a wonderful friend for the past 14 years. I will miss seeing you smile and I will miss you dearly. May you rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Really, really beautiful. Thank you. She, she, uh, you, you didn't, you didn't feel feel that age gap with her. So I can totally relate to that. You could just, you know, high five and get on with things. She, she was so much like that. Um, I just, uh, we're just going to share a little video, and I know we we did say four to five, but I, I'm getting a lot of messages of folks wanting to share, which is lovely. And uh, after the video, we have Norman and Peter. After that, if anybody would like to share, please could you just uh, message me on the chat and I can put it down in. So it's, it's, you know, we follow a bit of an order if that's okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hop Chong. Okay, now.
Thank you, Hok Chong. And thank you, everyone. I've just received uh, about six, seven names. Sharon, Weeching Deborah, uh, Lynette, Shona, Siumeng. Uh, if I can call on you one by one once uh, Norman and Peter are done with, we would love to hear from you. And um, just, just being mindful of time, if we can stick to maybe a couple of minutes if that's okay with everyone. Thank you so much. Norman, if I can ask you to share. You're on mute. If you can unmute yourself, thank you. Thank you. Elsa. I will always remember the holidays. Every time there was a Toastmasters holiday idea was mooted of course, the first question you ask is, who's going? And they'd say, well, Vicky may be there, I'd say, okay. And they'd say, well, Ernest may be there, I'd say, okay. And Cherokee would say, okay. What I was always waiting for was the words, ah, oh, yes, and Elsa's coming, of course. And as soon as they said Elsa's coming, I'd say, okay, I'm on. Because I knew that with Elsa, it was going to be a great holiday. It was going to work. Holiday with Elsa was wonderful. You know, she had an unfailing combination. She had good humor, practicality, sense of adventure, and a quiet authority. And you also, you always knew that, you know, if Vicky was going to try and take over or something like, Elsa would have none of that. She just, uh, she'd just stamp it down. She'd keep the balance. And we had wonderful harmony and great times full of imagination. Actually, the holiday I remember best with Elsa was not a Toastmasters holiday. It was in France with Esther's arty friends in the footsteps of Van Gogh. I'm just gonna risk Okay, I can't share my screen, which is too bad. I was just going to show you. So for, uh, Elsa had arranged, we, we've not discussed Elsa the artist. And uh, well, I have in my living room here, I have four of Elsa's pictures hanging. I know Alison has another. And Elsa was a keen painter not necessarily the most talented one who ever lived, and she never claimed to be a talented artist, but she loved to paint. 
And because she was short of money, I said, okay, I'll, so I'll commission you to do a few. So I will always be happy to have these pictures on my walls. We did this uh, holiday in the south of France in the footsteps of Van Gogh with two of Elsa's arty friends. We spent a week going around all the sites where Van Gogh painted and where he lived out his final climactic years. And in between, we would sit in uh, little street side restaurants and drink, drink cheap uh, French red wine. And in the car, we would have uh, such wonderful philosophical and religious discussions about the nature of God as you would never believe. Very, very intense. Um, others, others have touched on Elsa's deep Christian commitment. I will only say that I, I will cry for Elsa, but I won't try cry too many tears because I know that Elsa is not dead. She's asleep and she will wake to another more glorious morning and I will see her there. Many of us will see her there. So it's not death. It's just a, it's just a sleep. Um, she was a deeply committed Christian. I always remember one, one saying, she said she was talking about someone who had criticized her, her Christian faith. And she said this, she said, she said, would you believe they actually had the nerve to suggest that Christianity was a Western religion? Have you ever heard anything so ridiculous in your entire life? I mean, Elsa really had a way of just getting to the point. And, and I loved it. Now, I, I want to say one thing about uh, Elsa's, uh, her, her Toastmasters career, that as you know, the old Toastmasters scheme, you had to do a total of 50 speeches to get through to the complete gold, right? And Elsa, like many, she got into this and she, she got through about 47 and she got to speech 47. I don't know when it was, Ernest, it was probably about 10 years ago, wasn't it? And then she just kind of stopped uh, for years and years and over the last six months so uh, many times I said Elsa just get on and get your last three speeches done and get it finished because you've got so far just finish it and eventually she woke up and she's okay and she she started doing her her speeches again and finally she did her 50th speech about a month ago it was a, a video speech at Toastmasters in Christ, and she was, it was a video presentation. She dressed up in a white suit with a flower, and she looked stunning, because as you know, Elsa was not a great one for smart dressing, but on this occasion, she looked great, and I'm sorry we haven't got a record. But So finally, she did her 50th speech a month ago, and she wrapped up her Toastmasters training and I'm, I'm happy, you know, that she just got through it and she ended it. And that was happy. Um, she didn't have an easy life, Elsa. I always remember when you asked about her education, she would say, well, I'm a graduate from the University of Hard Knocks. Um, she, 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 you know, she, she, she had a hard life. She had very difficult family problems. Um, but she struggled on and she came through and anyway, I, I, I won't say any more. I just say that Elsa is not dead. Elsa is sleeping and we will meet again and let's just be happy for her and make this a happy occasion because that's what she would want. You know, she wouldn't want people all these tears, you know, she'd be saying, come on, we'll meet again. It's nothing. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Norman. Yeah, and that is so true. She, she's probably sitting there evaluating, oh, you just overdid it over there, and you missed out this, and so on. Yeah, good one. Thank you for that. It was a fearsome evaluator. i just say one more thing. She was a fearsome yeah. evaluator. And if I saw myself down to do a speech and Elsa was evaluating, I thought, oh, my God, you know. You know, her favorite <laughs> words were, well, I think perhaps you should consider repeating this project. Uh, you know, she... <laughs> She didn't pull punches. She, she said what she thought. Anyway, let's move on. 
I, I, I remember that, yeah. Perhaps you, I, I, no, I suggest that you repeat this project and that's it. <laughs> yes. That was very much like how. Okay, thank, thank yeah. you so much, Norman. I think yeah. before we, we um, uh, Peter, if you can wait for a minute. Hokchong, do you want to do a couple of pictures? Yes, I like would to like to invite everybody to open your video screen. Just open your video so we can take a, a, a group pictures together first. Everyone, okay? All right. Uh, yeah, we know uh, this is a, a memorial. Maybe we can just say it's okay. A slight smile is fine. Okay, can hear. Now, everybody, on your video, very good. Just a minute. Okay, just a minute. Okay, let me see. Okay, hold on. I'm taking a picture just now. Okay, this is the first one. Okay, now the second one. Just hold on. Don't move. Everybody, can you give a, um, can some of you, Estelle can open, S.Y., Claudia, Chin Fung, can open your video? Can you open the video so that we can all see your beautiful faces? Okay, this is the second picture. Okay, I think that's all we have now. Okay, Arishta, I'm, I'm done. Thank, thank you, thank you, Hock John, for, for getting this done. I always forget. Um, we have Peter to say a few words and bring up some memories. I think he's also sharing a little video. Peter, I can't see you on screen. Are you here? I'm here. Okay. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Over uh, to you. I need you to allow me to share my screen. Okay. Just a bit of wait a minute. Huh? Okay. One. Okay, um, Erita, you might have to do that because I don't, I don't have the button. Actually, honest, honest, uh, could you, yeah. Click on the green screen and allow multiple participants to share screen. Okay. I'm just going to ask you to do that. You're still the host. One, uh, the green screen, you're so, referring to the share screen, is it? Yes, the okay. green button. You okay, click on it. Okay. Button. Okay, now it's allowed. Okay, it's allowed. All right. Uh, I'll tell that's your screen. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So good. I first met Elsa um, in 2014 when I joined the club, First Masters Club Singapore. And she always struck me as a very unassuming person, a, a very kind and humble person. Even though she's not the first one who evaluated my speech, I believe the first person who evaluated my speech is Sarah, Sharon Bill. She's here at the bottom of the screen without a video on, Sharon. She always have kind words. For me, I have never experienced what Norman has experienced, the fierce nature of evaluation that he mentioned. Now, I haven't never had a problem with Elsa's uh, untimeliness because I use her as a gauge every time I attend the Wednesday lunch. If I arrive before Elsa, I know I'm early. And yes, what inspires me most about Elsa is um, her most forgiving nature as a person. Any jokes that you may play on her, whether it's during the club table topic session, or any outing that you go with her, she, she'll humbly accept it. And with a peculiar way of humor, she's able to turn it into a joke that everybody enjoys laughing at. Especially those that, um, that everybody make fun of her being the most eligible, you know, um, person to be matched up with the most eligible bachelor of the club. Yeah, that's what I remember about Elsie. And at this point, I'd like to play a video about uh, Elsa, whom I prepared. I just want to say that uh, um, what inspired me most about Elsa was her forgiving nature. She added me as a Facebook friend just two days before her passing. And um, yeah. You can see this on the recently other friend that she had. So I believe she still had a lot of life in her and spirit. And this is what I want to share about her in the video. 
It's a two minute video. Sorry, sorry. Let me just start from the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, it's loud. Sorry, sorry, technical. Ah, yes. How many of you remember this movie, Pretty Woman? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we really don't have a choice. Our world is becoming increasingly complex and dangerous. And all our young girls need to be strong and independent. We want him to worship the ground we walk on, don't we ladies? We want him to be powerful in the boardroom, sexy in the bedroom, <laughs> and useful around the house. <laughs> okay, I rest my case. Thank you. And I just want to say that um, from Elsa, I've, I've since learned to forgive myself for my unforgiving attitude towards those who have offended me. And I, I'd like to now ask for your forgiveness too, if my past unforgiving attitude has offended anybody in the club, because this is what I think Elsa would like me to learn from her. Just like what Lauren said, her passing is a great lesson. And just like what Norman said, she's still with us every moment of the way we live our life. Back to you, Arista. Thank you, Peter. Yes, you, you've captured all, all those pictures and memories, you know, from the tomboy to the graceful. And yeah, I think in all all of her moods. So thank you for that. Um, I just want to read out uh, the names that I have on my uh, on the chat here. Peter, do you want to unshare your screen? Stop sharing. Yeah. Wei Ching, so do you want to go first? Yes. Susan, Lynette, Shona, Suming, and Sharon after that. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Um, I just like to continue the episode that uh, Chin Ho shared. So we have these table topics asking about what do you want to ask God when you meet God? So, you know, we, we all know Elsa like to, is humorous and create crack jokes, right? So the joke of like, I want to ask God why I'm still single is basically a joke. So because by the, the next episode, following episode is, she said that actually she already know the answer. The answer is that God want her to be a cool lady, like really, really cool. So being independent, being uh, daring to, to start a new, new career or, or always adventurous in her life and never compromise of her own taste, uh, adventurous and uh, continue to expand her 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 interests and her expertise, etc., and shine on her talents in drawing, in speaking, in writing, in everything. And I just like to say that Elsa is single, but
but she never alone. She never lonely in her whole life journey. And she's loved by, by many people around her, at least by all the people in this chat room. So Elsa is always staying, uh, live in our heart. And she's a cool lady. She's a sister to me. And I will love her and remember her forever. That's what I want to say. She already know the answer. She is the cool lady. Yes. Back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bright and perky, just like she was. The cool lady. Thank you for sharing. Um, Deborah, I just got a message from you. So would you like to share something now? Unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for organizing this for Elsa. Oh, shit, I've got toilet paper on my eyes. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, I think one of the things that I'll miss most about Elsa is her uh, her unique perspective on life, her great sense of humor. Um, actually, Elsa and I, we, um, I've known Elsa for more than 25 years because we go back quite a long way. Um, she, she was doing publicity for this theater company called Action Theatre a long, long time ago. And I used to um, act in plays for Action Theatre. And uh, I actually wrote um, a, a tribute to her this afternoon on my Facebook page. So maybe I'll just read that out real quick. So um, in those days, every actor wanted to be part of an Action Theatre production because um, one of the main reasons was that Action Theatre always got great publicity and Akachai, who was a brilliant producer, pushed Elsa really hard because you know, Elsa was doing publicity for, for us back then. And um, she worked really hard. She managed to get us, you know, relative unknowns back then, to get featured in the newspapers. And in those times, before social media, to get featured in the newspapers was quite a big thing. And thanks to her, I had full page interviews in the papers, magazines, even uh, uh, a centerfold double spread that she secured for me. Um, I also remembered that during those times, sometimes after rehearsals, I would run into her and her eyes would be red from crying because, but then when she saw us, she would always, you know, have a smile on her face, no matter how hard a day she had. Um, Elsa and I lost touch after, after she left theatre, so she went on to do other things like insurance and, and I guess she was in Toastmasters, that part I didn't know. Thank you for being the family for her that she didn't, she didn't have around in Singapore. Um, understood that she went on to study psychology as well. And how Elsa and I reconnected again was actually through uh, coaching. Because in um, uh, both Elsa and I actually separately um, started on our coaching journeys. And we actually met again only a couple of months ago on um, this peer coaching site. And we were so excited to find each other again. And so we arranged a Zoom uh, meeting immediately and we caught up about old times and about, you know, stories about her life her mother, and, um, and we talked about the things we wanted to do in life, how we're going to retire, you know, uh, we're both single, and um, yeah, what we're going to do with our flats and stuff. And uh, she also invited me to her point of view um, uh, virtual sessions. She's also undergoing accreditation for that particular training, I understood sounds like last month, the last few months was, um, were months of accomplishment for Elsa. Um, I just heard from Norman that she uh, finished her, her Toastmasters journey or, or accomplished a certain uh, level of Toastmasters journey. Elsa also had actually um, submitted for her ACC credentialing for ICF, International Coaching Federation, which I am sure she's going to pass with flying colours. Because Elsa's an excellent coach. And, um, and also we talked about um, a play that she had written. And I think, she, I can't remember whether she won, but she, she did really well for the play. 
and she was going to send me that clay. We're going to put it up. Um, of course, she was like, oh, I need to look for it. This is somewhere in my hard drive. I got to find it. And she hadn't sent it to me yet. Um, but not to worry. I think the person who organized the playwriting competition, who's also a friend of mine, might have a copy of the play. So we might still put it up in Elsa's honor. Uh, another project that we wanted to do together was um, drama therapy for underprivileged children because, you know, we both had that in common, theatre and drama, and we really could see how powerful drama could be to help people deal with trauma or issues in their lives. So that was something that we talked about working together on. And one of the other things that we also talked about doing together was um, a project about her mother. See, I never knew about um, Elsa's story about her mother until we reconnected again a few months ago. And when she told me about her mother and I thought her mother is just one of the most fascinating characters I've ever heard of. And, you know, I really love to do a project together about her mother. And so we were actually quite excited about all these projects that we're going to do together. Um, and, I, and also, by the way, along that conversation, she also mentioned about um, heart condition that runs in her family. And while we were talking about, oh, how are we going to retire? Singapore's so expensive to retire. How are we actually going to, should we, where should we retire? You know, what if we live to like, you know, God knows how, how long. And she jokingly said that, oh, well, she might not have to really even worry about retirement because, you know, heart condition runs in her family and, you know, she might not even have to plan for that. So, Elsa, hmm. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so anyway, I just want to say that um, Elsa was an amazing person. Um, no matter what a, a tough day she had, she always had a smile for everybody around her. And she was always so caring for everybody around her. Well, her sudden departure, I think it's a huge loss to all of us who love her so much. And especially to her family. Um, but I have absolutely no doubt that heaven now has a new angel. And I'm sure Elsa is up there right now. And I hope she's happy about this tribute we are putting together for her. Yeah, so love you, Elsa. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah. Yeah, it must be brighter up there, definitely. And big smiles from her. I can, I can totally imagine that. So with you. And yeah, it's, it's surprising there that she mentioned about her, her heart condition running in the family because I think that's something we were just speaking about the other day. But your thing of wanting to do a play in her honor, good on you and good luck with that. Thank you for that. Um, oh, by the way, uh, just one last thing. Uh, if anyone has any stories about um, her mother that you know of, please do share with me. I'll, I'll leave my contact number that down below in the chat. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Susan, I have a message from you as well. Yep, that's me. Mm -hmm. Hi. So, okay. Hi. Um, the thing that I should come after Deborah, because uh, my my first encounter with Elsa was, I was the person in the newspapers, getting, you know, flooded with all those requests for, uh, all those um, press releases and, and everything, and if I gave a bad review, there'd be a you know, uh, um, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, there was once in the newspapers, there was this, our meeting, and somebody said, that woman is a pain. And it wasn't me, but I, I kept quiet and smiled. Like, <laughs> usually enough, became such great friends because after she left um, Action Theatre, uh, somehow she, she wandered into my church. And um, we became the best of friends. We were, we were roommates at, um, during church camps. So yes, I can agree with all the things about how, what a great um, travel companion she was because yeah, she had no bad habits and it was just fun and you know, affirmation. It's not one of those things where uh, you come back from the church camp 
feeling really happy, you know, and we'd sneak, we'd sneak wine into the, you know, into the thing for, for evening, for evening tipples and stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, and, and I think as we, as we got closer, because we both liked the drama and we, we, we were both in the same church, um, you know, I learned a bit about her family. Yes, uh, her father died of a heart attack. And, um, and I was just I was so amazed because one thing about Elsa is that, you know, there was that positivity that was um, of denial. She always had lemonade because, you know, the mother and then the father broke up and there was a bit of a scandal when she was a, a, a young, a young school girl. And later on, she wrote that play. I was in the audience cheering it on. It wasn't bad at all. And um, and I think uh, there was this courage that about Elsa that made um, that made her turn turn everything into gold. There was this uncompromising quality which made that meant that she would reinvent herself every few years to to iron out a kink here in her life, something that she wasn't happy about. You know, some people might say, um, look, Elsa, um, you're getting on, you know, maybe it's just time to, maybe it's time to, to just, you know, um, consolidate what you have. And it's like, you no, know, I think of this, she would be, she would be a better person for doing all that. And I think I became a better person for going along with the ride. And um, I saw her the Thursday before she passed away. Um, she was late, so me and another friend walked in McRitchie first, and then she joined us, and we had dinner together. And um, the good, the really thing I'm glad about is that she, we, you know, we were sharing, and she said, and, and she was in a very good place. Her relationship was sorted out. Her, her, a lot of the plans were sorted out. She was happy, you know, even though there were challenges here and there, everything was in control. And I think um, that's, that's um, a great comfort for me. That plus knowing that, um, you know, I'm a better person for knowing her. Thanks. Thank you so much, Susan. It's, it's beautiful to see you know, such big smiles as, as everyone speaking, even though it's teary eyed, I think it's, it's just the, the very thought of her that brings the, the smile no matter where it is. So thank you so much. And sneaking in wine, sharing your, your closest um, moments and making each other better for the better. So lovely, lovely to hear that. Yeah, she was in a really good place and I think she was very happy. One of the last things that, that I spoke to her before the COVID situation set in was, um, she was like, oh, I want to restart this coaching practice in a different uh, format and a different thing. And I want to discuss this, this, this. And I was like, yeah, 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 sure. And that's it. I think um, it's really hard to imagine past tense. But thank you, Susan. Um, Shona. Sh Shona? Yes. Hi. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here among them in the midst of uh, Elsa's friends. I'm very glad to see that she, ha I, I'm not that I'm surprised that she has so many of you here, spoken so many things about her, things like uh, aspects of her, which I was not even aware of, paintings and, you know, as, uh, so many aspects of her. But uh, mostly I'd like to talk about my own experience with Elsa. When I first saw her, it was at a speaker's club where I wasn't, I was in a state of, um, a lost state, I had been there. And I saw her speak, I listened to her and her energy and uh, positivity and the bubbliness, which we all talked about here now, was so strong that I could not not be attracted to her. And it was another friend of Casey, another friend of Elsa's, Casey, because of whom also that I was able to get her card that day. And I, I can actually very confidently say that if I hadn't spoken to her since then, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Moving on, she became my counselor also. So there were times when at night I would call and she was there. 
And more than that, as Teaching Ho earlier said, she was a very genuine and a caring human being. You know, her warmth uh, was always there. There was something very human about her, something very, you know, like uh, her care and the love she felt for everyone. That came out in all the times that I met her. She was open about everything. She was frank. And there was another word that we used here as well as about her being feisty and fearless, which was what she was. You know, she just gave it her full in whatever that she did. We also used another word here, flow. You know, she was actually like water, sometimes I feel. She was flowing and she touched people in very different ways. Like all, all of us who have spoken here had a different thing to say about Elsa because that's what she was. She was many different things. There was some beauty about her that just uh, showed out in her face, in her mannerisms, in the way she dealt with people. And I never knew that she came late to meetings, but I know that at the speakers club, she would often come after, uh, late, uh, I'm sure after a coaching session, she would come there. But there was, once she was there, she was there. And she would come with a smile and she was in effect, she would be a grammarian sometimes. She would have noted all the points and she would put it all forth in such a way that it made it all more exciting. As um, um, Norman said, if uh, Elsa was coming to a trip, he was also going for it because he knew it was going to be a great, going to be great fun. So it was almost like that. If she was there, everyone wanted to be there and wanted to listen to her. Another thing was, uh, there was always this, uh, I would hear that she was going to give a speech and I waited for that moment. But it never happened until probably a month ago and when she gave that speech in Agora and I was very happy to listen to her because I had been wanting to, I was longing to listen to her speak. And uh, another thing was she was, she evaluated often as well and uh, I was very happy whenever I made a speech and she was one of, she came for that uh, particular session and evaluated. And um, she was so confident in our relationship that she was able to speak frankly because often when I speak, sometimes I can go on a monotone, you know. So, but the thing is, she was the one who would tell me that. And I'm happy for that. You know, with a very frank, straight face, she'll just a little, in a small voice, she'll say that. So, of course, I got the message. And, um, uh, you know, and she, I, knew, I would take it in the right way. And she knew that that would be the case. Um, what else can I say about Elsa? Yeah, it's just that I'm so glad she was in my life. She still is. And she will always be a wonderful memory, a beautiful memory. And is there anything else that I wanted to say about her? Um, I think everything I've said, she has been personally and professionally been a blessing. And, and I believe she has been so for every one of us. Just knowing her has been a blessing. And she will live on in all our memories. And I will forever remember her with great fondness. Thank you for this opportunity to share a few words about us. Thank, thank you so much, Shona. Yeah, it's it's really lovely, even, even for me, because I've known Honi for a year, but listening to all the stories from all the friends and their experiences gives so much of a deeper insight and whatever I knew about her is like 10x more uh, deeper, you know, how it was. She was very feisty, fearless in giving opinions about what she actually thought. It was always for your better. But uh, yeah, thank you, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Lynette from... Um, is it the, the same association or Agora? Lynette, you're here? Thank you. Would you like to share Hi, that? Yes, I'm here. Thank yes. Um, okay, thank you, Lisa. So I knew Elsa actually, I'm very new actually, based on the stories that I've heard of her so far. I've only known her for the last two over months. And we're in the same coaching community uh, that Deborah spoke of. Um, and it was actually through one of the peer coaching sessions when we connected. But the memory of her is so ingrained in me. And from hearing all the stories um, that have been shared um, amongst her friends, it's truly touching. And to hear of how she has touched individuals and actually are still teaching us life's lessons along the way, it just truly befits her and her character. So uh, allow me to read two other tributes that uh, we've consolidated from the coaching community that she's in. So this is from Suresh. Um, Elsa, a calm and composed person, 
I've known her for over two years, but more close from the coaching training that we were together. I got to know more of her passion towards people development in the coaching community we are a part of. She shares her deep knowledge during discussion sessions and have been bold in stating her opinions, <laughs> something that's very uh, true. And I've seen Elsa as a person who dares to take action, whether perfect or not. And that's a learning for me to be the way to procrastination. I was with her virtually in a mindfulness session just exactly a week before her bodily disappearance. She was bubbly and joyful. And that image will remain frozen in time with me as she holds the smiley face stress ball in her hand when we took her picture. Now the second tribute is from Mailing, also from the coaching community. So I first met Elsa at CC's uh, office where she worked briefly before when I first began my coaching journey. She was lovely and kind. And while we did not have much opportunities to interact with each other, her name was a, fam a familiar echo of support and new initiatives for the coaching community. The distress that the community felt at her departure is telling of the powerful impact she left behind. My deepest condolences goes out to her, her family, her family and friends who knew her well. She's a bright star who left us too soon and may she continue to smile upon us from the heavens above. Over to you, Arisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynette, and also for sharing the messages that you have from others. Um, I just want to ask, is someone screen sharing from here? And if you can stop share. Mok Chong, are you able to see? Um, Arista, click the top. You see the stop sharing? Just click stop sharing for her. Um, I, don't have, I don't have access over here. Mok Chong, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm, I am still getting a lot of messages. If I miss you out on the chat and I, I miss it, it, it scrolled up, please do just resend it. Um, Sharon, you just texted me. Would you like to go now, Sharon? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is very early in the morning here in Bermuda. Sometimes the universe gives us an earth angel and Elsa was my Singaporean angel. I met her in 2013. She guided me through joining the Toastmasters Club of Singapore. She also introduced me to my favorite shoe store in the Novena Shopping Center. I was a fan and a huge fan of her art. What, one of the things I've learned tonight is that she was always, always late. I didn't know that. And so we were the perfect pair because I was always late. So that meant we arrived at exactly the same time, which was perfect. She was a writer a speaker and a teacher. She created the Women of Wings group and also introduced me to my first Zoom meeting in 2018. How fortuitous that is because we use it every day now. She was a good friend. Elsa had a quiet confidence, a great laugh and an unstoppable spirit. I will miss her laugh. Her superpower was her compassion. Elsa, I am sad that I will not laugh with you again or hear your beautiful voice or asking me the hard questions about my life. I will miss your infectious smile that makes all of us smile. Rest in peace, my friend, rest in peace. I will miss you. Thank you, Sharon, so beautiful and so so nice of you. I, I did receive the message from Vicky earlier that you wanted me to share, but I'm so glad that you're here with us at the moment. Thank you for your sharing. Um, Sumei, can I ask you uh, if you're ready to go now? Sumei? Yes. Hi. 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 Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Thank yes. you so much for taking us through this and thank you for everyone's really inspiring sharing. Uh, this is a very short one and um, I just felt that Elsa has left us at such an inconvenient time, for me at least, because I wish that I had had time to thank her properly for her friendship. And I will always hold dear in my mind, my heart, my spirit, the time that she has given me. And I think this resonates across a lot of us because time is, as they say, the most valuable thing that a man can spend or a woman. And um, for example, 
when my book was launched in Ipoh in 2016, Elsa was one of those who made the time to make the trip to attend. And why was that important to me? I would never forget that what brought me to TMCS was the fear of speaking. And it is said that that is, the, that is even worse than the fear of dying. So excuse the pun. But as you can imagine how every single friend and every familiar face in the audience comforted me in a ballroom filled with strangers. And when I moved out of my apartment in Singapore, Elsa was the last person that I saw who, together with my helper, cleaned up, handed over the keys to the landlord because I was in too much of a rush to catch my flight. And a week later, Elsa was in Ipoh, where I'm speaking to you now, to help me settle into a new place. So aside from family, who else would do that but a true friend whose fundamental value is kindness? So my point is that Elsa's legacy to me is this precious friendship that I will carry with me and try to pay it forward in action by being the kind of friend to those who I value in the way that she inspired me with her friendship. And I will make it a point to express to those who I value how precious they are to me, as Lawrence has pointed out, as often as I can, because even if it does not come naturally to me for every one of them, I think it is important. And I think that Elsa would approve. What do you think? And I know that, and I can sense and feel that she's here with me always. And um, wherever she goes, her eyes will be twinkling in merriment and bringing smiles to those around her. Bye bye, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, very, very true. I think so, so true. Everything. It seems like that she, she's around, you know, listening to everyone. So. It's, it's a tough one to imagine she isn't, but thank you. Uh, Rosalind, I have a message from you only just now. I cannot see yes, the message, you. but yeah, okay, thank you so much for- Yeah, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I'm sorry, this is Please, very absolutely. last minute. Yeah, um, well, I didn't know, want to know whether to speak or not because I just feel that I may not be able to take it, but uh, I'm okay right now. I, I, I'm just happy to be this group, in fact, um, the very reason why I know this group is because of Elsa. Uh, I met her in June 2016, so that's exactly two years that I know this wonderful lady. She was in the uh, Toastmasters at the Sheridan Towers where Hock Chong, Hock Chong actually invited, he forgot actually, Hock Chong invited me and that's when I met um, Elsa. I've not been a member of any Toastmasters club. Um, but when Hong Chong then invited me, I said, okay, let's just uh, go. And then um, Elsa was speaking uh, something about two bags of rice. That's all I can recall. And um, somehow after the event, I just felt that I wanted to speak to this lady. And that's how I got to know her. And we exchanged cards. And then after a few months, we called up each other and we met up. And we, you know, with Elsa, you can just connect so easily. And that's how I did with her. I just connected with her so easily, you know. And, and the best part was that we found that we were from the same uh, St. Denis convent, which is our ex-school. And um, so we were just joking. Yeah, I said, you know, I kind of felt that you were probably a convent girl. I said, yeah, a convent girl can smell another convent girl from very far away. And, and, and we became instant friends. We, you know, on our first meeting, uh, uh, we, we spoke for like hours, you know, in a cafe in uh, Plaza, uh, Singapore. And, uh, and then the... Um, you know, after that, there's a few events that we went on, went on business uh, uh, networking sessions and all that. And the last that I um, um, spoke of with her, uh, there were two sessions. Um, she invited me for a Woman of Courage uh, uh, webinar. And it was so funny. I was just still, you know, just before I come on, I just reading her messages. And, and one of the messages was, Ross, are you already in there? I said, yeah, I'm about to come in, but because she gave me the wrong ID and password, you know, she said, sorry, sorry, you know, that's why I couldn't get it. But before I could get it, she said that, Ross, they're all so young. I feel so old, you know. So I said, switch off the video, then nobody can see you. 
So we always had this funny laughs about getting old and, you know, as a comedy I just absolutely love her, her sessions. And, and again, um, my last meeting, so to speak, with her was also on Zoom on the Toastmasters uh, in Christ Club where uh, he, uh, he invited me and uh, unknown to um, uh, uh, Elsa that I was also invited into the same group. And we met there and said, oh gosh, Elsa, like, you're also here. And she spoke her, that's the final speech, I think, to get her 50th, uh, you know. Sorry, I'm not familiar with the terms of Toastmasters thing, but I think that is a 50th thing that uh, just some one of the gentlemen uh, spoke about. And she was asking for a recording and everything else. Uh, yeah, Norman, right? I think the lady, the man in red, just came on the screen here. Yeah? I think he, uh, he, Norman was in the, the session as well, right, Norman? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, uh, so so that was the uh, like what Norman said, you know. I uh, she looked amazing, and uh, you know, with her just before she speaks, she put on that white jacket with the flower and everything. I said, "Oh my gosh!" You know, she's really, really uh, getting very professional. I was laughing at myself just as Norman was talking about. But you know, she's just so bubbly. You know, like every one of you had said about her, she's just so bubbly and so crazy and. Uh, I, I, I really wanted to laugh that every one of you, you know, uh, laughed about her lateness. Yes, the last lunch meeting we had, she came in so late, you know, and uh, uh, as usual, you know, we had several uh, Wednesday lunch meetings um, and I always enjoyed those wonderful times with her and, and uh, the girlish laughs that we had. You know? so, so that night when I received the message from the Wednesday chat group, it really, really broke my heart. You know, I, 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 I said, what? Some, you know, I think Gay was the one who said that, um, um, uh, th does somebody know that something happened to Elsa? I said, why, what happened? I quickly messaged her. I said, what happened? She said, oh, something actually collapsed. I said, okay, I tell you what, I better call on her. Didn't even call on her. And of course, very sadly, you know, I, before I could do anything, Vicky quickly replied and says that we lost our friend. I said, what do you mean we lost our friend? Uh, what do you mean, cannot be revived? What do you mean lost our friend, you know? So, and I immediately deleted a message when I realized that it meant that, you know, we really lost her uh, as in she passed away. So, you know, it was, it was a horrible night for me. I really did not sleep till about 2 a.m. the night. I just couldn't sleep because I cannot imagine that, you know, a friend like that has just gone, you know, even though we knew for a very short time. So I'm very thankful that I'm because of her as well. I came to know you a lot. You know, you are guys are really wonderful. I hope to get to know more of you. I got to know quite a few more uh, during all the lunch uh, 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 meetings that we, we have together. Uh, and I, I, I love this community and I, I really want to get to know more of you. I don't know how, but maybe through Vicky, because I think Vicky is quite instrumental in this group. And I've met Vicky at the uh, funeral week. Yeah, thanks Vicky yeah, for connecting me to this group again. Yeah, and so you know, that's just my gratitude uh, and appreciation for a friend that uh, uh, I really enjoy so much. And I think this world would really be a, so much a nicer place if we have a lot more Elsas, yeah? And, um, and, and, and for this community, thank you so much. I, I love getting to know you all. Thank you for your time. Yep. Wow, thank you, Rosalind. I'm, I'm so glad actually yep. you, you were thinking whether to, to say a few words or not, but you decided to. It was needed. Thank you. And she, she, she must be really happy as well hearing you share. So yeah. honestly, yeah. Honestly, thank, thank you for that. And Vicky, a special thank you to you because you've been um, chasing me with and sending me the names of, you know, the ones who are going to be logging in. You've actually reached out to all her different groups. So really appreciate that. I think it was a time to come together. When I initially thought of, uh, you know, getting a, a tribute together from our side, from TMCS, where she was with us for 30 years, uh, it was really just a simple, you know, a, a few memories shared a couple of videos and pictures and uh, a closure and a bye. But this is so much more. And I'm, I'm just so, so happy to actually have hosted this or put it all, you know, you know, everyone's uh, put it together. But so, so nice in getting to know so much more about her. More at peace, I should say. Um, I just wanted to ask if there's anyone else who would like to share anything because I've gone through the list of messages unless I've missed someone. And if not, then we're, we're good to close. Um, sorry. So sorry, uh, this is Yi Chin. Can I say something? Yes, please. Uh, okay. So uh, I am I'm different from everyone. I'm not close to Elsa. I joined TMCS uh, on and off. So what I wanted to say is uh, 
what I remember Elsa the most is there was once in a lunch gathering with TMCS people and we were saying talking about uh, there will be a uh, event in the on, on a Sunday and with their friends so I just like soft because I'm not the, everyone's friend so I just softly and say oh uh, can I join you know so Elsa immediately reply and say oh sure why not let me add you in the group and then she get my numbers and she make sure she update the timing and date to like to make sure that I can join them so to me as a stranger I, I felt that oh she's so welcoming and she's so warm so uh I just want to say that uh, Elsa departure is a great loss to the family, to the friends. It's also a loss to someone who briefly know her. So, uh, so the message that she gave me is that uh, be kind and be generous to not only to your friends, even, even to strangers because you never know what is the impact that you give to the person. So uh, I hope Elsa can uh, continue to live happily and bubbly in the heaven. We all will miss you very much. Yeah, that's all from me. Thank you for that. And thank you for stepping up to, to say a few words. Well, very powerful, very beautiful. Uh, a short association and, and got you so moved. So honestly, thank you for that. Um, just just asking again, because it is 6.15, sorry. Sorry, can I just say something? Yes, please. Hi, hi. I um, just wanted to say something um, about Elsa. Um, I feel it's a really a privilege that I got to know her. And um, I just want to say that she's, she's really game for everything. And um, I remember the time that she joined uh, my Lions Club for cycling, and it was really fun. Um, so I just want to say that um, even though we're all very sad that she's gone. Um, but like what um, someone said that she, Norman said that she's just asleep and we'll see her again. So, um, so let us just take comfort that she's with the Lord right now. But I will always remember her and I, I it's kind of regretful because before the CD, before the, she, she asked me out, she asked, you know, to go for lunch or something, and I was very busy. So, um, so now I have to wait till the Lord takes me home, then I can see her again. Yeah. See you again, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to be closing now. And Hok Chong, if I can request you to play, uh, it's, it's a sing along, Amazing Grace, requested by friends of Elsa to close the meeting, if that's okay with everyone. Hock Chong, if you're ready with the song. Okay, just give me, all uh, right, I should be, just, I'm ready, just a minute, please. Just a minute. Wait, now, can everybody see the screen? All right, if you can see the screen, I shall play the music. Everybody sing along.
Thank you, Hock Chong. Thank you so much, Hock Chong. Thank you, everyone, for being Thank here. You. Thanks for organizing this. Yep. Thank you. I just, Thanks. yeah, I just, before we close, maybe just a few minutes of silence, just in your heart, whatever you want to say to Elsa, and we can close with that. If everyone can just mute. Thank you. Thank you, Hong Chong. Thank you, Elsa, for bringing us together to celebrate the life you have given to us for being a good assembly figures that we all will follow from now. Thank you, Asta, for arranging this meeting. Thank you, Toastmaster Club of Singapore, for bringing all the members and non-members together. Asta, how can we call you a day? Yes, thank you so much. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here again. Bye-bye. It's been lovely, and I think we can call it a day. Lovely to have you seeing everyone. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank Take you, Alison.